I am application architect and um, few years ago I worked on a really big project and there, are, there was a lot of microservices and then I understand that um, I read, I, I remember I read about Istio and it was almost something interesting. And then after that, I decided to like to have a journey with this. My journey started that I understand that I, I need to learn about Kubernetes. First of all, I learned Kubernetes. I read book about Istio. It was several years ago, I think maybe four. And after that, I'm, uh, I set up Istio. On my com on my computer, and uh, tried a few things, and it really amazing as I as I remember. Um. So, from, from my understanding, you need to use Istio for really big projects with a lot of microservices. Uh, it sh maybe it could be a banking application or. Uh, and uh, you should use Kubernetes uh, for this because for small projects, it's not so good as for me. But for big projects, it will um, provide you a lot of tools, a lot of functionality that in other case, you need to write by your own and to spend time on this. So uh, what is Istio? Istio is a service mesh. And what is service mesh? Service mesh, it's control service service-to-service -service communication, provide load balancing, authentication, really great thing, authentication, for example, authorization, monitoring, and tracing without modifying application code. It's almost true because it, you need to modify a little bit of your application code, but this is like slight, sli uh, really minor modification. Also, you can enable, this is a key, key, key features of the Istio. You, you can enable traffic management in your services. For example, you can rate limits of services, you can create a canary releases, you can uh, do circuit break it, uh, breaker uh, pattern, you can apply. Also, another um, key point is the security. Um, you can add like additional level of security inside your cluster and for this, you will not pay anything. I mean, you will not uh, add your code. You, you will not add new code. You will just, you need to install and configure Istio and it will add uh, uh, one level of security. Also, it, it, you, can, you can use observability tools that are built in Istio, inside an Istio. Uh, those tools like Kiali or Jagger, and you can, you can debug your application. And this is really great tools. You guys probably um, may use it in other places, but in Istio, you also can use it. Also, Istio is a platform agnostic. You can use it in uh, whatever cluster you need, whatever Kubernetes cluster you want. It can be EKS cluster, it can be Google uh, Kubernetes cluster or Azure Kubernetes cluster. I, I'm not sure they have it, but it should, probably they do. And uh, yeah, uh, the next slide is about how your, how your cluster will look like without uh, Istio. So you, you have a bunch of microservices and uh, you have several ports to serve microservices and you have connections between microservices and interconnections between microservices. This is, uh, this is like a really small setup without, the, without an Istio. Istio will add, um, for every port, it will add a special proxy container inside the Kubernetes. And that, that proxy container is really lightweight. And it is written in Go. And it, it can be configured, it is configured using Istio de, uh, daemon. And um, communication between microservices is done through the, those proxy. And that's why? It can, uh, it can modify request. It can do some rate limiting. It, it can do a lot of stuff because proxy has a configuration from Istio daemon and then it can decide what to do. And um, yeah, it's really easy to install it. Um, you can download Istio. It has uh, been um, inside the archive 
and you can install it like you do. You can apply any um, special YAML files to your Kubernetes cluster, and it will be installed. Or you can use a special tool, Istio Control. It is called Istio Control that can install Istio to your cluster. Um, yeah, there are a lot of extensions. As I mentioned, uh, they are called, for example, Kiali or Jagger that can add more functionality to your cluster. That can, they also, it also supports Prometheus. You can export your metrics to some, uh, you can create exporter for your metrics. And it implement approach all or nothing. So you, what you need to do, you need to install it to your cluster. Then you need to mark your namespace with a special uh, tag and all pods that are created in, inside this namespace will be, uh, Istio will be added to those pods. So it's it's better not to have like one pod with Istio proxy and another pod without Istio proxy, all or nothing for namespace. Um, yeah, okay, uh, let's go. <laughs> this is one of the, um, I, I would say under, uh, inst underestimated features of Istio, this is uh, MTLS, mutual TLS. So without Istio, you will have, you, you have uh, microservices and they communicate probably using HTTP. And for example, you have several nodes and those nodes um, can be in different time zones, in different uh, dat data centers, uh, locations or whatever, and they will communicate you using HTTP. But uh, you can easily add uh, enable or enable MTLS support. And in this case, every communication between microservices will be encrypted. And uh, yeah, if you want to implement it uh, by yourself in code, it will cost you a lot. But uh, Istio provided it without any code changes. You just need to uh, enable it, like set up, enable, do some configuration, but this is not program programming yeah and also a renew of uh, automatic rotation of certificates is also supported it's not a problem at all um yeah okay <laughs> so another great feature of istio is the circuit breaker um, circuit breaker you know uh, this is architectural pattern that allows you to disable some load or fail fast and it can, for example, disable a replica if it become to fail. Um, and after some time, it can check if it works or not and enable disable it again. Uh, again, you don't need any modification in the code. You just need to set up some, do some DevOps part and um, you can do this. And probably you will not, uh, you will not have cascading failures of your microservices. Um, okay. Also, one of the most uh, coolest uh, feature in the in the Istio, this is uh, traffic management or canary releases. Uh, you can you can deploy uh, micro version two of microservice or maybe some beta microservice version uh, to your cluster, and you can split traffic between those microservices between version one and version two. Also, really great thing that uh, you can uh, split th this, the traffic using some uh, header. Uh, you can, some custom header that you uh, you design. You can, for example, have uh, some uh, extension to the browser that will add to every request, it will add some custom header. And uh, Istio will know that uh, if you use, if you have this uh, header, you, you're gonna use another version of microservice. It's, this is very useful for debug, for, for testing some new features of the like beta version of microservices. Yep. Um, this is a screenshot of one of the a tool, uh, monitoring tool that uh, can be enabled in Istio. It is called Kiali. And the, you can run dashboard, uh, like you can enable it and run dashboard using Kubernetes commands. 
and it 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 just show your uh, microservice uh, map, and every every piece or in on this screenshot is clickable. You can click on the uh, arrow and get the traffic management uh, how how many requests were passed during this uh, were processed during this during period of time how many errors and etc you have a lot of information there you can see how, what is the traffic splitting between different microservices you can even control some parameters inside this inside this uh, dashboard for example you can say that uh, on screenshot you can see that you we have several versions of um, uh, reviews microservice you can control it you can say like uh 90 percent will go to version one yeah it's a really great tool and it will show you how your microservice how your setup works how your yep um this is uh, another tool it is called jagger and the jagger is for the distributed tracing uh, you can basically you can enable it and it will show you all the requests that are passing to your uh, to your cluster it will show how much how many how much time uh, time we are spent on uh, different parts of it um, so in this case you need to modify a little bit you need to pass this is one place where you need to modify your code uh, because uh, you need to um, pa like parse and um, uh, headers and uh, send the, those headers to the next service if you are planning to to call next service and to propagate headers basically because Istio cannot know about if uh, if it was um, what request. To, uh, calls this uh, request to another service because it controls input and output of the container. Um, okay, if you don't have questions, we uh, probably yes, sir, will... we had a question from Yuri, but Yuri <laughs> okay. stopped raising his hand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw probably this slide just answered my question because it's really uh, similar to other observability tools like that data doc. Yeah. But basically, to give you more insights, you still need to do some code changes, right? Uh, unfortunately, for distributed tracing, yes, because you need to mm -hmm. uh, process or propagate the headers. Uh, okay. I I also like when I uh, read about this first time, I how how come how it, how it can be? But after that, I understand that there is no other way. So you need to propagate headers because you need the trace yeah, ID. Yeah, you need to connect your transactions. Yeah, there is. Yes, it's yes. Obviously, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Unfortunately, there is no other way <laughs> for this. Okay. And um, just briefly describe my use case because uh, I when I read about the Istio, I decided, oh, great tool, I need to use it. And after some time. I decided to develop one uh, SaaS application. And this SaaS application was about selling API. Um, so I have one container that is open sourced and I want to run it and sell um, amount of requests to this container, right? Amount HTTP request. And what I decided to do, I decided to use Istio for this. Uh, I so the the goal was not to ch change container at all because it was it can be written in any language you you know it can be Java and I'm a Python pro programmer mostly and it can be written on any language and the core idea that you don't want to modify it at all you don't want to write any wrapper around this container in, a, in around this service you need just authorization of it and uh, there is a special authorization policy that will allow you to do this and the authorization policy accepts a lot of different parameters uh, it can be OAuth token gvt token or it can be custom authorization 
custom authorization, uh, you need to provide some special service for this. And I just wrote a small service and it basically in Python, it's written on Python. And the service uh, just accepts the header, uh, check the header is valid and uh, in the database actually. And if it's valid, it returns, yeah, you can, it authorized and that's all. And it, it works, it works. And um, right now the service can more than 20, it can, it can handle more than 20 requests per second. And I think even more, but I didn't test it actually. Uh, one, another one good uh, point that you can reuse that service for any other services you want. It can be, you can add a lot of more services uh, that you cannot control with it and <laughs> sell API to this, uh, to call these services. Um, yeah, and this that was a really good part uh, from Istia because without modification of the uh, source code, I added new functionality and it works basically yeah if you have some questions i will i will answer them thank you i just wanted to understand uh, in this request to authorization made from the istio sidecar or it's another layer it's in istio uh, that uh, make this authorization and then propagate request to sidecars yeah. to necessary ports exactly it is uh, made by istio sidecar uh, it authorizes the request, uh, check the status of the HTTP. If it's like uh, 200, okay. So if 200, I can propagate this request uh, further. If it's something else, it just responds with uh, with your response. What authorizer is responses. Thank you. So ju yeah. ju just to double check. So uh, Istio lets you to write custom modules or uh, in Python, is it? It's what not module. Saying? It's uh, it's another service basically. Um, okay, but run by Istio, yeah. Uh, not exactly. So this is just a common service in Kubernetes, oh, and you okay. can like uh, point to that service from Istio mm -hmm. configuration that you say, okay, to authorize this request, you should go to this service, and you you have like internal link, you know, in Kubernetes mm -hmm, internal mm -hmm. link. And you should go to the service and uh, authorize it. And, and you kind of specify what per request to authorize and what not. You kind of set some rule, yeah? Yeah, yeah. You can okay. uh, do routing. Uh, you can say, for example, this request can be, uh, should be authorized. This request shouldn't be authorized. You can specify mm -hmm. like uh, verb, get, post, put. You can, for example, um, specify a, uh, um, you can uh, accept, um, you can specify accepts, for example, for this header, uh, you shouldn't authorize the request. Uh, like, I don't know, admin header <laughs> or something like that. In, but, in my... but by, by the way, what about the pricing of Istio? Is, is it's it open, uh, open source? So it's mm -hmm. open source. You can install it in uh, your Kubernetes cluster without any mm -hmm. problem. Okay. And B because it's kind of overlaps in a lot of cases that showed here with Nginx, yeah. But Nginx, a lot of features that, that they are in plus version. <laughs> you mean, for example, OC URL? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like authorization. Uh, yeah, I, it's kind of the same you know, that authorizer in Istio, but it, not exactly because Auzi URL will uh, authorize your request uh, uh, at the beginning of the, like uh, when um, request comes to your cluster, but inside your cluster, it cannot authorize the request. Mm -hmm. and so this... here it's mostly about uh, having this inside the cluster, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I can tell you that I have... Um, so this is that was a basic setup. Uh, then I decided to uh, create a uh, GraphQL uh, proxy, and I wrote on the Python uh, GraphQL uh, scene proxy. And uh, you know, in GraphQL, you can run 
a lot of requests. Uh, you can create like five requests uh, for different endpoints and uh, and the setup with the Istio can, will authorize every request and it will count every request. So authorization of every request not so good, but counting of every request is good. <laughs> Because instead of one request counting, you will get uh, like uh, five requests, for example. I mean, in, because uh, this authorizer not only authorizes the request, but also counts uh, uh, how many how many requests are. Because I need to, um, I have like a plans for for every uh, for every customer for every for every plan I have like. Uh, one million, for example, invocations of the API. We have one more question, Yuri, no comment. Hello, hello. Uh, quick question. Do you run Istio in production, like in battle tested one or yep. is it just, okay. Yeah, and, uh... Uh, as I said, I, I have a small service uh, and uh, that service uh, is about selling the API, um, access to the API. And uh, I, 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 several times I saw that I have more than uh, 200 requests per second. Um, I think it can handle more. <laughs> I hope so, <laughs> but I didn't test. Okay. Uh, do you run any jobs like Kubernetes jobs or is it just a pure service and that's it? Uh, what do you mean, sorry? Do you have any Kubernetes jobs running? Oh, right now uh, I don't have. Okay. And just to finalize this, uh, I also recommend you to check that the Istio currently supports ambient mode. So basically there is no need of the sidecar injection. You can run uh, technically just one Istio D service and every, every pod that you enable ambient mode for will have a Z tunnel. To the ESTOD. So okay. It Sounds good. A little bit the overhead and makes it a little bit more simpler, to be honest. Okay. Uh, I checked maybe several months ago. I, I didn't. Know. Okay, but I will double check it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh... Yeah, we have one more question from Alexander. Uh, thank you. Uh, how do you tackle cost control of APM and tracing? data like do you sample uh tracing do you store it locally in Jaeger or something like that or you do some, some sampling in order to you know control your cost on fast observability solution yeah definitely i do sampling and i run my setup on the hedzner um, machines and it's a rel relatively big machines uh, with a lot of uh, uh, CPU and uh, SSD. And I don't have like a, a really big problem with the hard disk, uh, with the size of the hard disk. But you store this information locally, like your observability, yeah. Jaeger, it's local. Yeah, yeah. It, no, is, stored, SaaS solution. it is stored in, inside mm -hmm. the, some container and mm -hmm. uh, it has some expiration time, I believe. In... Okay, thank you. Yeah, we can proceed. <laughs> it's it's just few 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 slides. Uh, I I just uh, give you the some resources that you can uh, can be useful in learning Istio, and uh, for example, as a software, uh, uh, as a worker in software, you can uh, access this uh, this U Udemy course is your hands on the Kubernetes. It's a really good course. If you want to be more familiar with this, please, uh, please check it. Um, yeah, if you can, you can also be interested in the book uh, of reading book is to up and running. And uh, this is the source just uh, from my, this is my recommendations. Um, yeah, and I think, I think that's all.